Welcome to Mountain Slater Garage. Have a new product here that I've been looking at trying this year. It's called the Riders Turbo Tainers. These are a company out of uh, Canada that make these. It's a little clutching component for your Skidoo Turbo. Nice little kit. I've been wanting to try it for a while. Gives you a little more adjustability in your clutching. Um, it's nice thing about the P-Drive clutch. You already have the clutching on the clickers. You can adjust a little bit on the top end, but these allow you to have a lot more adjustment, especially if you're going to be tuning your sled and uh, putting more power to it. These give you a lot more options on how much more weight you can add. Like if you're doing the 20 horsepower tune, the 30 horsepower tune. Now there's two kits that they make. They make this kit, which is the stock kit. And if you can see this kit, it has the, just one hole really here where you're going to be putting weight. The turbo kit, which is this one, has actually two extra holes out here. If you're going to be tuning your sled and adding more horsepower, you need a little bit more extra places where you can add weight to this. So it's really no different than adding new weights to your P-Drive clutch. You've got to take the belt off. You've got to be able to spread the uh, clutch apart and then be able to get your whole weight component out. And we'll show you how to do that. It's a pretty simple procedure. And then we'll go install these. And we'll uh, right now have this tuned with the stock tune. So we're going to put the stock turbo tamers in it. Kind of just see how they do. The nice thing about these is they have this little heel component where you can add and subtract weight that helps you be, to be able to adjust your um, ignitial engagement. And that's really nice because there's not really a lot of ways to adjust engagement RPM on a snowmobile other than changing your primary spring. So that's a nice little adjustment these have in them. These also have a little holder in here to be able to hold your P-Drive clutch open so you can open up the clutch and get to the weights easily without having to have too much trouble. So we're going to show you how this works. We're going to take it to the trailer here, turn on the lights in the trailer and the heater and uh, install one of these and then we're going to go test ride it. So before we install the turbo tamers, one of the great features of them is being able to easily adjust your engagement RPM. I'm just going to show you what my engagement RPM starts at and then throughout the video we're going to change the engagement RPM weights in the heel a little bit just to kind of show you what kind of improvements we can get. Some people like a, a lower engagement RPM some people like a higher. I'm not here to tell you which is better. And so we're going to see what mine is. I actually don't even remember. It's been so long since I've already looked on the snowmobile to see what it is. But let's start it up. We'll see what my engagement RPM is. And then as we install these, we'll show you kind of how that changes with the adjustment of the weights. All right, let's just focus in on my tack here. All right, so there's my RPM. We're idling about 1,200, 1,100. We're going to slowly increase. About, so looks like I'm engaging right around 4,000. Rub it up one more time. I can just feel it start to engage a little bit. Yeah, so our engagement RPM is right around 4,000 RPM. Um, some people like it lower than that, more towards 36, 3,500. We're going to see if we can lower it and then see, maybe see with changing the weight to see how high we can get the engagement RPM. So let's go install the turbo tamers and we'll go from there. All right, so one of the nice things about this turbo tamers kit comes with two things. It comes with this little thing that can hold your clutch open once you get it open. And then it comes with this other little tool like this to put in here to get your clutch open in the first place. What you want to do with that, you want to put this end back down in here. This end hooks on the stationary sheath on the back side of your primary clutch. And this part slides on like this, locks on to the movable sheath of your primary clutch. And you put the nut on it. See like that right there. It's in. Put a wrench on here. Tighten that nut down. <coughs> and that will compress your primary clutch. That's going to allow us to put this piece on. That's going to really kind of lock this into place so we don't have to worry about it snapping closed on our fingers. And now you can see we got our little clamp there that holds our primary clutch open. And that's going to allow us to move our clutch around so we can get all of our weights out. Okay, now we've taken this piece back out we got that other lock in there, and that's going to allow us to move our clutch around like this and get all of our weights out. The next thing, and the next step we've got to do, now that we've got our clutch opened up and our little clutch holder on here, and got this opened up as far as it will go away, we're going to take off this screw right here. 
it's a Torx bit screw. It's uh, 25T Torx, and uh, that holds the pin in that holds the weight in through here. So I've already loosened it, so we're just going to take that out. The shaft that goes through here is press fit on this end, and so you got to tap it out that way. Uh, it doesn't just come out, unfortunately. And it's tempting if you don't have the right tool for it. I actually forgot my right, my correct tool when I brought this. It's tempting to just like hammer on there with the hammer on that screw to push it out. Two problems with that that I've seen happen. You can bugger up the Torx threads or the Torx bit hole on this side of that. Or if you hit this hard enough, you can actually tweak the head so the tweak the head isn't perpendicular with the threads and bugger up that. Or you can mess up the threads. So try to avoid hitting the screw the, uh, to punch the pin out. What you can do if you don't have the correct tool like I don't have right now, this is a 5 millimeter .08 thread metric screw. You can screw that into here. You want to screw it in a little way so you don't bugger up the threads. And then you can just put something on here on the, end of the head of this. I like to use a plastic mallet. That way if I accidentally hit something else, I'm not going to bugger it up like if I use a steel hammer. And you can see this end of the right here the pivot um, shaft is out. We're just going to unscrew it off our bolt we put in and you can see our, our weight falls away a little bit. You got to pull that weight out like that and that's how the weight comes out. Pretty simple. It's going to go back in in reverse order. We're going to pull out this pin. We already loosened it with it when it was in the clutch. So I'm going to pull that pin out. Now the place we're going to, the part we're going to replace is this part right here with the turbo tamer. The turbo tamer is going to go on just like that. So you can add weight. This is what we're going to call the heel. This is what we're going to call the tip. This is going to go back in here to hold this together. And while you're having this together, you're going to have to put it on whatever number you want your clicker to be on. Mine just happened to be on four, so I'm going to leave it on four for our initial testing. Put that together. Now these come with this myriad of screws and washers. And they have weights, how much each one of these parts weigh in the Turbo Tamer's instructions. And for mine, for the 20 and a half ski do, it says to put in one of these 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter long thread screws with, it actually says to put in two washers. I'm only going to start with one and I'm going to put this in the heel right here. That actually adds, that actually is three grams of weight we're going to put in the heel. And I'm just going to try it like that. I'm not going to, I'm probably going to need tip weight and it says to actually put one screw in the tip. I'm going to try it like this first just to see how it goes before I add some tip weight. See what, how far I can get with just doing working on my clickers. So I'm just going to install it like this and uh, we'll see how it goes after a little bit of testing. So this really just goes back in in reverse order. Put your weight back in there. Your little pivot shaft is going to go back through there. Now we got that back in there like that. We're going to put the screw back in and pull this pivot shaft all the way back in through here. Tighten that down. We'll do this with each of the weights and then we're going to go and test this. Okay, one other thing I wanted to mention, when you put this tool in to compress your clutch, you want to compress it in far enough that you have this other tool in here, farthest in notch. You don't want it on this notch, you want it on this notch. That way your clutch is compressed enough you can easily get your weights in and out. So just another key feature when you're putting this together to make sure you have it compressed enough that it's easy to get your weights in and out. Okay, now we've got our turbo tamers installed. Really the only weight we have in the tamers is in the heel, the part that mostly adjusts the engagement RPM. So remember when we checked it before we installed them, we were engaging about 4,000 RPM. Let's go check it now and just kind of see where we're engaging now with a little bit of weight I put in. Seemed a bit lower, like 36, 3700. Yeah, it's much lower than 4,000 now, which is really nice. The engagement almost just did a little bit of test right here just seems so much smoother. I mean, it's not even hitting 4,000, as you can see. Yeah, about, seemed like about 3,600 or 3,700 about now where I'm engaging instead of 4,000, which is real nice. So, uh, we're going to go ride this now. Got a little bit of snow coming down, and uh, we'll see how it goes. 
Okay, well now we got our turbo tamers installed on our sled. We have this little line up through the trees I do here. It's pretty nasty. About 800 feet of vertical rise up through the trees to the top. Kind of a fun little ride. It gets a little technical all the way up, so it's kind of hard to make it your first try, but we're going to see what we can do with the turbo tamers on and, and uh, see the on and off throttle response and just see how it goes compared to the stock setup. So let's go. I think it's the fastest I've ever gone up there through the trees. Oh, that's a lot of damn work, but a lot of freaking fun. Good job on the ski do turbo. Good job on the turbo tamers. I mean, my throttle response on and off the throttle was like perfect and amazing. Back shift was great. And what a beautiful view up here. So, so far review on turbo tamers excellent product i mean i wasn't really didn't really know what to expect out of them um until i got them installed and uh here we are at the top of the mountain about 800 vertical feet from where we started amazing ride up so much fun wow completely out of breath that was a lot of work not hitting some of those trees but um turbo tamer is a nice add-on you got to remember it's only one part of your com clutching component though um the primary clutch there's also some modifications and things we can do with help at back shift and upshift through stuff in the secondary clutch but for just a primary clutch modification really impressed so far great product i recommend it to anyone that wants it. it's pretty inexpensive 200 dollars took me about an hour to install it and uh Let's go from there. Let's have a great winter. Remember to share these videos, like them, and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And we'll see you next time I'm out in Sarda Garage. Let's go tear up some of this new snow. And uh, we'll go have some more fun with our turbo tamer clutched ski do turbo. See you next time I'm out in Sarda Garage. So here's one thing I learned the hard way again. I did this back in 2017 when I was adjusting my clutch on my 17 ski do 850. Um, didn't have the clutch cover on it. Like just now when I started to pull around into the trailer, got down in here and my knee hit the belt, <laughs> ripped the shit out of my pants. I and mean, this is almost a brand new climb suit. Um, second time I've done something so stupid. I should have known better from doing it once before five years ago. But anyway, um, if, you're, if you're out adjusting your skidoo and uh, just be real careful if you're gonna go move it without having a clutch cover on you don't get your knee into it. And, rip the crap out of your pants so anyway lesson learned 